for that lot. <laughs> Good afternoon, an enormous welcome to the Today's the Day Celebrity Challenge on October the 12th. Our team captains all this week are two great entertainers, and joining them, champions from previous series, so let's meet them. First, a real television live wire. She presented 11 series of record breakers, she's just recorded a new children's show, she's a top-class cook, and when she was with one of the country's most successful pop groups, she had no fewer than 20 chart hits, including three number ones. Please welcome Cheryl Baker. <laughs> Martin! I don't deserve myself! <laughs> I, I hesitate to ask, what on earth are you doing now? Do you know, at the moment what I'm doing is working on a, a travel programme, it's awful. I'm having to fly to hot sunny climbs and do films, you know, walking along sandy beaches, it's just dreadful, it's awful. And everybody thinks you have a wonderful time, but we know it's really very it's hard tough, work, isn't it's it? It's tough, <laughs> no, it's tough, but it's wonderful. What's the favourite place you've been to? Um, do you know, well, it's not actually the favourite place, but somewhere that I was surprised about, I was told that I was going to somewhere hot and steamy, and I thought, oh, lovely, I like that. And they said Spain, and I thought, well, I love Spain. Mm. I think there's some wonderful parts of Spain. They actually flew me to Benidorm. And I thought, oh, Benidorm, I'm just going to be lager louts, and it's going to be... But it was wonderful. It I was, was really great. impressed, yeah. It's yeah. not actually my favourite, but it's, <laughs> it's gone up in my esteem. Yeah. Chell, who's your partner today? <laughs> my partner today is Paul Froggart, who's a civil servant and a part-time DJ, who I hope plays Bucks Oh, well, the two of you will get on like a house on fire here. <laughs> and Paul's from Swinton in South Yorkshire. Excellent. Well, Cheryl's opposite number all this week is a real king of comedy. He's appeared in theatre, television and films. He's a writer and producer. He's worked with some of the biggest names in show business. It is, of course, John Junkin. <laughs> I never knew I was that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it all together, it looks pretty impressive, it's doesn't it, John? Marvellous, thank you. <laughs> You've just been touring the country in a marvellous stage show for, what, 19 weeks? Yeah, uh, lovely, lovely, funny play by Victoria Wood, who is the funniest lady in the world, as everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. It was called? It was called Talent. Ah, oh, well, that's why you were well, there. Well, that's <laughs> so, but it was in, Introduce it to your partner. I will say, indeed. I will tell you, this is Ian Otley, and I read this little card before we came on without my glasses, and as far as I could make out, he is a polite civilian in a swine. <laughs> With my glasses on, he is a police civilian from Swinton. That's <laughs> <laughs> different. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our contestants are in place for the Today's the Day Celebrity Challenge. And we start with our TV round. On the video wall, we have a selection of vintage programmes which were on the air on this very day in years gone by. And, as usual, we have a couple of intriguing clips in there for our team captains. But to win control of the wall, you have to be the first to answer this question. So, fingers on buzzer, please. Topping the pop charts today, in 1977, the song Silver Lady was a hit for... Paul and Cheryl. David Soul. David Soul is right, best known <coughs> for his role as Hutch in Starsky and Hutch. You have first crack at the wall. I've no <laughs> idea what the bottom right one is, so I'm going to go for the top right. Ooh, top right coming up. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, Monday, you had two pints. Yeah. And a tanner each way on Crown Prince, and he went down, didn't he? <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, you had two pints, half a pound of butter, shilling the win on Mickey Mouse a second, and he came in at seven to four on. Four, That's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, two pints, four pound of sugar, quarter pound of tea, shit in each way, Mary Miller, and he went down. Yeah, he fell down. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, one pint, dozen eggs, bottle of cream, two bottle of wind, lucky Charlie, he was scratched. Oh, lucky, eh? Yeah, cool. Friday, you had one pint, and I got your laundry and paid for that, didn't I? Yes. And you had two bottle of wind, midnight express, and he come up at under two eight. Yeah. Let's add that lot up then. Hey, Philip. It's all from Kay. Uh, yeah. Oh, I owe you one egg. <laughs> 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 John Junkin as Wally the Milkman, offering Else Garnet a better alternative to his usual service in Till Death is Too Part, today in 1966. What is the connection between that series and the 30s films 
Little Miss Marker, Curly Top, and The Littlest Rebel. Go on, and we'll, we'll guess Dandy Nichols. No, offer it to Ian and John. I think, I'm not at all sure about this, but I seem to remember that in the, the sea of expletives that came out of Warren Mitchell's mouth, he used to address Tony Booth as Shirley Temple. Yes. And Shirley Temple was the star of those films you mentioned. Could not have put it better oh, myself. Yeah. Quite Excellent. superb. Excellent. And Ian and John, it is your choice. Yes, we have yeah. as well. Well, we'll go for Cheryl then. I'd well, like to why see not? <laughs> why not? Bottom right coming up. Hello, I'm Cheryl Baker, and you know what Sunday is? It's Mothering Sunday. Our chance to say thanks, Mum, to that dear relative. And there's no better way to say thanks, Mum, than with a bunch of fresh-cut flowers from your local florist. Every participating florist has that special bouquet for Mum this weekend. It contains atroplex, amaranthus, arabicum, ranunculus, anemone, hypericum, celosia, bistosia, lysianthus, and lilium stargazer. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl Baker earning a gotcha from Noel Edmonds today in 1992, and we know all about gotchas on this programme, I'm afraid. <laughs> now, uh, Noel Edmonds began his Radio 1 career in the year that Concord flew for the first time. Richard Nixon was sworn in as president, and man first walked on the moon. Which year was that? Was it? 1969? Is correct. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. You know him too well, don't you? Paul and Cheryl. What you fancy? Bottom left. Bottom left. Bottom left. Coming up. Yes, thank you. Yes. Allow me to introduce you to a few of our little British customs. Ah, Plan B, of course. Uh, you're absolutely right. Now, have you anything to declare? Certainly. Veni, vidi, vicky. Well, you're allowed a half bottle of veni <laughs> and 50 vidis. But I'm afraid your Vicky will have to go into quarantine. <laughs> you do not seem to understand, madam. I am invading you. I know, and we're thrilled. <laughs> Ancient Roman comedy today in 1970 with Julian Orchard, Harry Seacombe, and which American oh, comedian? Say, I knew, I knew he was going to ask that. Who? Yes, yes. Thomas Stiller. Thomas Stiller's right, yes. <laughs> you're there, you're off zero. <laughs> Ian and John. Top left. Top left, on the way. You can hardly remember, can you? Of course I can, Doctor. We sat in that boathouse. Yes, I just reminded you of that, didn't I? <laughs> oh, no, you go to Brand Patch, George. There's no point in an anniversary if you can't remember what it is we're celebrating. I wish you wouldn't keep on saying I don't remember. You don't, I can tell. We took a picnic lunch, didn't we? And we had it under a... <laughs> had it under a weeping willow, didn't we? Prunella Scales and Richard Bryars as newlyweds Kate and George Starling in Marriage Lines today in 1963. In the 50s, Prunella Scales played the daughter of a northern boot shop owner in which film comedy starring Charles Lawton? Oh, um... The Hobson's Choice. Is correct. Oh. Paul and Cheryl. Mary yeah, that's not Mary Hopkins. No, no, it's <laughs> Clodagh Rogers. Let's oh, go for the mid top, top middle. Top middle coming up. From this old world, I try to hide the face, but from this loneliness, there's no hiding place. Within this cold and a deep heart to dwell in darkness with memories I know so well. Cloda. An empty world for Cloda Rogers today in 1971. Earlier that year, she came fourth in the Eurovision Song Contest with which song? Jack in the box, mm. you know whenever love knocks. <laughs> we're I'm off, gonna we're off. off. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Ian and John. Um, Patrick, on? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, uh, I think it's Patrick, isn't it? Middle Patrick. left. Although I was on a regular army reserve of officers, they kept forgetting to call me back. Mm. And we used to live in Becks Hill, though, and I was wandering around, aged 20 or whatever it was, or 21, um, <coughs> in Becks Hill, 
and I was the only person under 50 there, you see. And the old ladies were really on the verge of giving me the old white feathers. So I had to join up again. So I've been every rank up to the rank of lieutenant twice. <laughs> Patrick Cargill recalling his army days today in 1985. In which 70s series did he play a six times married antiques dealer? Was that, was that the antiques one? Yeah, I can't it. Father, dear father. No. Oh, Operator oh, Paul and Cheryl. I have no idea. No. Um, father, dear father was in fact an earlier series. Oh, golly. No. No, 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 no idea. idea. It was the many wives of Patrick. No. And it's your choice, Paul and Cheryl. Let's go for the woman with no face. Bottom, Bottom middle, middle. The mystery woman will be revealed. of the killer plants today in 1981 in an adaptation of which John Wyndham story? The Day of the Triffids. Is right. And Ian and John, you're left with middle right. We are. I liked it very much. I think it's uh, got an interesting opening. I think the key change is quite exciting and I would put my money in the jukebox. Good. I think it'll get there. Oh. Right, well, let's vote this record, Jerry. Uh, as a whole, Blue Angel by Richard, uh, by Roy Orbison. Oh, Richard Weiler. A hit or a miss? <laughs> And where you are, you see, some of them didn't like it, but they've definitely voted it up. Yes. Actor Richard Wyler and fellow panellists voting Roy Orbison's Blue Angel, a hit on Jukebox Jury today in 1961. On which day of the week was the programme traditionally shown? Saturday. Saturday. Saturday is right. So <laughs> at the end of that... Of what? Why the unseemly <laughs> laughter? We because we Friday. both went Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, in that case, you deservedly are on 15 points at the end of round one, and Ian and John are deservedly in the lead with 20. <laughs> <laughs> on to our next round. Stop the clip. Fingers on buzzers, please. Buzz in when you think you know the answer to the question. The sooner you buzz, of course, the more points you get. And we're starting with a report from today in 1989. What is happening here? Start the clip. The heyday of the cinema was the heyday of the newsreel as well. Pathé News and its British and American rival... Paul and Cheryl. It was Pathé being sold. Yes, a report from today in 1989 about the sale of the Pathé Newsreel Company. The Frenchman Charles Pathé was the first to show a short motion picture of current events in England way back in 1897. Let's continue that trip down memory lane. Half the pictures are on old film, which is unstable, capable of bursting into flames spontaneously and sure to crumble eventually and a full team of restorers is transferring the pictures to safety film. Some magic moments of history there. Next, a report from today in 1982. What is happening here? Start the clip. Dawn brought the Prince of Wales aboard to watch the final act for himself. Until now, he's only made her acquaintance as a diver. 20th century technology went... Paul and Cheryl. I think it's the raising of the Mary Rose. You would think correctly. It was a report in the day in 1982 about King Henry VIII's flagship, the Mary Rose, being raised from the bottom of the Solent. It had lain there for 437 years after it sank on its maiden voyage in 1545. Some music now from today in 1987. Can you name the group and the song? And I need both for a correct answer. Start the clip. Paul and Cheryl. Gosh, that was quick. That's the Bee Gees, and you win again. Well done, oh. my word. You even beat Cheryl to that, Paul. That's <laughs> saying something. Well, I thought it was a bit quick, you know. But I, I thought, oh, well, don't get it wrong. Oh, I bought but that you for didn't. my wife, that's why I remember. Didn't. Oh, really? Right, well, uh, well, let's create the, the romantic moments that must have flowed from that, <laughs> here and now.
So Ian and John are languishing there on 20, while Paul and Cheryl have suddenly shot way ahead with 52. Yeah. <laughs> right, fingers back on buzzers, please. Five points every question. Time for our quick-fire round. First seen on television today in 1981, which drama series starred Anthony Andrews and Jeremy Irons? Ian John. Is it Raffles? No, offer it to Paul and Cheryl. Brideshead Revisited. Brideshead Revisited. Is correct. They played Sebastian Flight and Charles Ryder. Brideshead Revisited was filmed at Castle Howard in which English county, Ian and John? Yorkshire. Correct. Which Quaker who died today in 1845 devoted her life to prison reform? Ian and John. And Elizabeth Fry. In unison and correct. <laughs> Elizabeth Fry's campaign for reform was inspired by a visit to which notorious <coughs> London? Paul and Cheryl. Uh, Newgate. It was Newgate Prison. Well done. Today in 1968, the Olympic Games opened in which city? Paul and Cheryl? In Mexico. Correct. The winner of the high jump event in that year's Olympics was Dick Fosbury. What was the name of the... Ian and John? Fosbury Flop. Yes, that was the name of the famous technique that he used. Well interrupted. Married today in 1982, who won the previous year's Grand National on Alderniti? <laughs> Paul and Cheryl. Bob Champion. Yes, and he married Joe Beswick. As the couple walked from the church in Chipping Camden, Gloucestershire, who approached them and said, Bob Champion, this is your life. Ian and John. Not Ian. last one. Michael Aspel. No, offer it to Paul and Cheryl. Is it? Yeah, must be. Eamon Andrews. It was Eamon Andrews, yes, who then <laughs> presented the programme from the wedding marquee. Born today in 1929, who presented Mastermind for 25... Paul and Cheryl. Magnus Magnus. Yes, he presented it for 25 years. What was Magnus's traditional response? Ian and John. I started, so I'll finish. Yes, I was nearly going to say that, because we had the buzzer <laughs> for the end of the round there, didn't we? I was going to ask you what his traditional response was when the time-up signal sounded in the middle of a question, which is what he did to us. I've started, so I'll finish. We have finished that round. Ian and John, you're on 40, starting to pick up again, but Paul and Cheryl still well ahead on 82. <laughs> After all that frenzy, we'll take a short break from our Today's the Day Celebrity <laughs> Challenge in the studio to give you at home a chance to win a pair of round-the-world air tickets. So keep an extremely keen eye on this clip. I'm just a lazy slob, I mean, I quite like not shaving. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, oh, that's what I quite like not shaving when, uh, when I'm not working. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me it was all for a marvellous part that you would go to do. <laughs> no, 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 perhaps I should have told you that. <laughs> a rather scruffy actor today in 1985. Who is he? A. Gary Oldman, B. Daniel Day Lewis, or C. Ewan McGregor? If you know the answer, ring 0891 339900. One winner will be selected at random from the correct answers. If you win, you can choose either a superb, state of the art camera to record your magic moments or a gourmet weekend at a top class hotel near you. Five runners-up win a newspaper published on the very day they were born. Everyone gets a chance to compete for our grand prize, a pair of round-the-world air tickets. That's 0891 339900, and the lines are open until midnight. And the answer to Friday's question, the former MP turned novelist was Edwina Curry. And we'll let you have that question and the phone number once again, as usual, right at the end of the programme. Back now to our video wall. There are eight clips here, some more difficult to answer questions about than others, so you do have a choice, and as you can see, the clips are worth five, ten, or fifteen points. Ian and John, you kick off first. Um, we'll go for the bottom right, please. Bottom right for fifteen points. <laughs> Television equipment will beam live pictures of the Queen's walk on the wall around the world. The East is red, says the Chinese national anthem, but this week there's a hint of royal maroon at the Great Hall of the People, where the Queen makes an historic speech before moving on to Shanghai, where the royal yacht will tie up where once British gunboats berthed. Preparations for a royal visit to the Great Wall of China today in 1986. For 15 points, the wall links the Central Asian desert with which sea? South China Sea. No, offer it to Paul and Cheryl. No, we're just making our mind up at the moment. Oh, <laughs> You've been waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the Mediterranean. We'll the, the Timor Sea. No, it is in fact the Yellow Sea, oh, and it's your choice, Paul and Cheryl. Let's go middle top. Top middle for ten points.
I'll Meet You at Midnight was the song. It was at number 11 in the charts today in 1976. For 10 points, name the band. Smoking. Okay. In unison and correct. Ian and John. Bottom left. Bottom left for 15 points. Look at those eyes. Toys are getting back to basics, they say in Hong Kong. And as they're the world's largest exporters, they should know. The latest crazies are robots. Then there are stinkies, little models with names like rotten eggs, dead fish and bad breath. And they smell every bit as terrible as they sound. <laughs> I'll look into the future of the Hong Kong Toy Fair today in 1984. For 15 points, which toy designed by Ruth Handler was unveiled for the first time at the New York Toy Fair in 1959? We'll have a guess at Cindy. No, offer it to Paul and Cheryl. Barbie? Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ian went for the wrong one. <laughs> it was Barbie, and uh, Ruth Handler named the doll after her daughter Barbara and her later creation Ken after son Kenneth. And Paul and Cheryl, your choice. Middle right. Please. Middle right for ten points. All other news from Hollywood was temporarily eclipsed by Shirley Temple's wedding. The greatest of all child film stars had grown up. She was now 17 and the bride of Sergeant John Agar of the United States Army Air Force. Shirley's countless fans and admirers all over the world will certainly wish her and her GI husband the very best of good fortune. Shirley Temple, a report from her wedding today <coughs> in 1945. For 10 points, of whom was she talking when she said, I stopped believing in him at an early age when he asked for my autograph? I know, it's Father Christmas, isn't it? Do you think so? Yeah, it is. Or is that too obvious? No, it is. Definitely. Father Christmas. Father Christmas is right, yes, Ian and John. What do you ask now? Middle left. Middle left for 10 points. Why should women steal the limelight in fashion? Here's an eye catching sports suit, for example. And there's a pocket for everything. The man about town, of course, has to maintain the English tradition, and obviously this is how to do it. And here are some examples of the full fish and soup outfit, a uniform nobody's dared to change. Suits you, sir, today in 1961. For 10 points, which hard-wearing woolen fabric used in suits and coats is made of smooth yarn and takes its name from the Norfolk town where it was originally made? Tweed. No, not Tweed. Paul and Cheryl? Well, yeah, I'd have no idea. Norwich. Tweed. No, you're all <laughs> going to kick yourself. Worcester. Oh, that's what you said. I thought it was Worcester. You wouldn't have got away with Worcester, I can tell you. You'd have had to say Worcester. <laughs> and it's your choice, Paul and Cheryl. Uh, bottom middle. Bottom Thank middle you. for ten points. The Astoria Theatre in London's West End was a cross between Crufts and a Whippet race meeting as the search for a canine star got underway. The key test came when the fall chorus belted out the show's title number. For one whippet, it was clearly all too much. <laughs> Whippets up for a starring role today in 1984. For ten points, what type of dog was Beethoven in the 1992 film of the same name? Big St. Bernard, wasn't he? Was he? Yeah, Big Slobbery St. Bernard. A big Slobbery St. Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> big Slobbery St. Bernard. Is correct. <laughs> Ian and John, your choice. Uh, we'll go for the phone box, please, Martin. Uh, top right for five points. For 30 years, Irene Hart has cleaned the village telephone box at Barnsley near Sirencester. She was so used to it, she hardly realised she was being paid. Not surprising when British Telecom gave her an easily forgettable 54 pence a week. But because it cost them four pounds in administration, they're bringing in private contractors. One thing Irene will miss. Each week as she cleaned the box, her sister used to ring her up from Yorkshire. Now they'll have to write. Ah, Aww. truly getting the brush off today in 1983. For five points, who was the voice of Busby in the BT commercials? Bernard Cribbins. He is right, who is also the voice of the Wombles. And Paul and Cheryl, you are left with top left. An RSPCA inspector took to the tiles after the fox was seen on the roofs of terraced houses in the Bedminster area of Bristol. Despite all efforts, he's still out on the tiles and the RSPCA say they'll call in reinforcements when they make another attempt to catch him tomorrow. A not-so-cunning fox today in 1978. For five points, 
which phrase, including the word fox, is used by typists to see if their typewriter is working properly? The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. He is right. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Ian and John on 45 points. Paul and Cheryl, is there no end to their talent? 132. <laughs> So to the final round. Time to beat the clock. 60 seconds of questions about the 12th of October, but only one team member can play. Paul, you're in the hot seat. Let's go. 60 seconds, starting now. Celebrating a birthday today, which former newsreader famously danced with Morecambe and Wise? Angela Rippon. Correct. At the Conservative conference today in 1977, which teenager and future party leader received a standing ovation after a speech? Uh, William Haig. Correct. Today in 1981, which group was in the pop charts with one of those nights? Book's face. He's right. <laughs> Today, in 1537, the future Edward VI was born. Who was his father? Edward V. No, Henry VIII. Today, in 1938, the film The Adventures of Robin Hood was premiered. Who played the title role? Errol Flynn. He's right. Today, in 1973, whom did Richard Nixon nominate as his vice president? Gerald Ford. Correct. Today, in 1996, Frenchman René Lacoste died. He was a champion in which sport? Tennis. Correct. Today in 1949, Vivian Lee was starring in the first London production of A Streetcar Named Desire. Name her husband who directed it. Ooh, Laurence Olivier. Laurence Olivier is right. <laughs> and Ian, your target to beat is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> 60 seconds, starting now. Born today in 1935, which tenor sings with Placido Domingo and Jose Carreras? Correct. Today in 1940, American actor Tom Mix died. He was famous for his roles in what specific type of films? Uh, silent. No Western films. On TV today in 1970, Frankie Howard was going up Pompeii. Who played Odious in the series? Pass. John oh, Junkin. <laughs> <laughs> today in 1492, which Genoese explorer landed Columbus. in America? Correct. I boarded the MBE today in 1988. Who became the first British golfer to win the US Women's Open? Laura Davis. Correct. In the cinemas today in 1924, who was playing the title role in the silent film The Thief of Baghdad? Errol Flynn. No Douglas Fairbanks. To marry today in 1951, which Middlesex cricketer also played football for Arsenal? Compton. Correct. On the London stage today in 1933, Elsa Lanchester was appearing in Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard with her husband. Name him. Ooh, Charles Lawton. He's right. <laughs> So, our first contest of the week ends with Ian and John on 95, Paul and Cheryl, a magnificent 202. <laughs> so, many congratulations to Paul and Cheryl, and uh, thanks also to Ian and John for a splendid contest. I'll be back tomorrow with Cheryl and John and two more unsuspecting innocents. So I do hope you can make a date. Join me here on BBC Two, half past five, for what should be another terrific contest. Till then, bye for now. And a reminder of the Today's the Day phone question. We saw a rather scruffy actor today in 1985. Who is he? A. Gary Oldman, B. Daniel Day-Lewis, or C. Ewan McGregor. Call 0891 33 The lines stay open until midnight. <laughs>